PHP is a very powerful language, but it's limited in what it can do without connecting to a database. In this section, we are going to learn how to connect PHP with database and unleash the true power of PHP. To connect the PHP to a database, we are going to use MySQL database management system. MySQL is widely used and a very standard database language. So it's a great first one to learn it. It will allow us to store things like usernames, passwords, as well as actual content for our websites. There's a lot to learn and no time to waste. So let's get started. We need a database to store details of our users or our content or whatever we want on our website that's going to be updated regularly. And we're going to be doing this with MySQL, which stands for Structured Query Language. There are many structured query language out there. We are going to be using MySQL because it's completely free, it's open source, and it's extremely widely used. Almost every paid web hosting comes with MySQL pre-installed. If we start the XAMPP server, you will see the MySQL is already here. First, to start the Apache web server. Now click on this Start to turn on MySQL database management system. Alright, our server and MySQL are running. Now we are going to see how to create our database and a user and how to allow the user to access the database. Click on this admin button. Now we are on our PHP My Admin panel and this is our database management system. Here are several databases those I have already created. Let's see how to create a database. Click on this database tab. Here is one option says create database. And there is a text box. It says database name. Write down the name of the database. I'm going to write example underscore database then click on this create button the database has been created let's see how we can manage our database in order to add some tables and some content here is our database if we click on our database we will see only one option create table everything we store in database are stored in some table so the simplest way to think about a database is that it is a collection of tables and each table could be imagined to be more or less an excel spreadsheet with a bunch of rows and columns so if I want to store user information, I might want to create a table or a spreadsheet with the name users. I need to specify how many columns I want my table to have. And I can change this later on. But I think I want to store an email address, a password, and an ID number for each of my users. So I'm going to put three here, then click on this go button to create the table. I need to describe each of my columns and tell the database that what type of values they're going to contain. So I'm going to start off with my ID number. Now it's a very good idea to have an ID number in all of your tables. So it should really be the first thing that you put in every time. 
Not only does it make it easy to find a particular record, but it also actually makes your database more efficient and faster when it comes to finding information in it. So we'll call it ID. It's going to be an integer. I don't need to specify any length value here. What I do want to have is, I want to set this as primary key. And then the database knows that this number is going to be a unique key that we can use to refer to a particular row. And then I'm going to click AI, which is short for auto increment and that essentially just means it will add one to ID each time we add a new user which is very useful feature so we don't need to set the ID number manually ourselves okay so now I've got our ID number we're going to have our email address which I will call email and this time we don't want an integer because it is not a number I'm going to use text type here finally we're going to have password and that's going to be text too we don't need to set default values for any of these or change any of these complex options at all we can have some comments if we want, but I'm just going to leave that blank and then click save and that will create our table right here. And you can see there's a number of things we can do with this table. We can browse the data in it, we can change the structure, we can add or remove columns, we can search it, we can insert data into it, we can drop it or delete it completely. So, as we don't have any data yet, let's insert something first of all, then we will have a quick browse before we go on to connecting to our database with the PHP script in the next section. Click on this insert tab. This is the email column. Let's add an email here and I'm going to use 12345 as password then click on go it runs and we can see some text here which we won't look into in that much detail right now but we will be writing stuff like this in our upcoming section for now let's get back to the table and here are the data we have just inserted a few seconds ago let's create a user now who will have access to this database to do it click on home icon then go to user accounts these are the users who are already here we're going to create a new user here is an option add user account click on it here the first field is for username our username is going to be example underscore user Next field is for host name. Set it to localhost. Then set a password for the user. I'm okay with 12345. Then repeat the password. Then scroll down and click on go. The user has been created. However, this user does not have any privilege or right to do anything with the database. 
let's say privilege for him go to this user account again here is our example user click on edit privilege we want this user to have privilege on example database only that is why click on database tab notice here this user has no privilege on any of the databases from here choose the example database then click on go here are the list of privilege the user can have I'm going to check all that means this user can do whatever he wants in this database now click on go now if we go back to database from user account we will see that the example user has the privilege on example database so we have created the database then created a table in the database added id email and password finally we have created a user and assigned privileges to the user so that he can use the data stored in the database one very quick word on passwords is that you should never store users passwords in plain text like i'm doing here this is very bad because if you get hacked and someone gets access to your database then they can see all of the users password so they would be able to access their accounts on your system but more significantly because people use the same password for many different accounts they might well be able to access their online banking account or even their Twitter account and take control over it so I'll show you how to properly store passwords in upcoming sections but for now we are just concentrating on how database works databases are extremely powerful they are absolutely critical to web development but of course we don't want to just work with our database in PHP my admin we want to use it in our websites and that's what we are going to learn in the next section how to connect our database with php